You ever notice how some people have everything come so easy to them? Even if they hit bankruptcy, within six months, they're back on top of the world again. Meanwhile, you have to hustle and grind for every penny you make. You want to know the secret to why? Well, stay tuned because that's what we're going to talk about in this week's episode. Welcome back to the FMS Mastermind Podcast. I'm Nathan Frazier, internet marketer with face tattoos, and today we're going to reveal the secret of how to live life on easy mode. But before we get into that, I'm going to tell you a story and ask if you can relate. So the other day, I'm in the store, and one of my friends, a longtime friend of mine, a girl that I've known for a number of years, comes running up to me, and she gives me a big hug, and she's like, Nate, actually, she doesn't call me Nathan, she calls me Cupcake. She says, Cupcake! how are you doing she embraces me we hug for a second and then we start talking and she's like how are you doing how's your business going how are things going and i'm talking to her about her career that she's involved with and we're just talking back and forth and we're talking for about three or four minutes catching up on old times as much as you can in a grocery in a grocery store aisle but uh, the whole time i can't remember her name for the life of me it's right there on the tip of my tongue but i can't remember her name so i'm like hey girl how you doing what's going on i can remember things about her i can remember what her new job was i can remember mutual friends that we have i can remember their names but i can't remember her name and so the whole time i'm beating myself up i'm racking my brain trying to remember her name and i can't do it the whole conversation i never say her name a single time and i feel so bad about it and i say okay well it was good to see you catch up i'll to hit you up on Facebook or Snapchat or something like that. And we'll talk later. And she walks around the corner. And the moment she walks around the corner, Aaron, her name was Aaron. Why couldn't I remember her freaking name was Aaron? And I felt like such a jackass. It wasn't until I stopped trying to figure out what her name was. It wasn't until it was too late to figure out what her name was that I remembered what her name was. And this happens to me all the freaking time. So as a copywriter, as a marketer, sometimes I'm trying to figure out what's the best headline for this sales piece, or how do I connect the headline to the hook or the hook to the lead? How do I find a a golden thread that'll weave this whole, uh, a big idea that'll weave this whole piece of sales copy together? How do I connect this advertorial to this sales page or this ad to this advertorial or this landing page to this email sequence? And a lot of times I'll sit there staring at a blank screen trying to figure out what I should write next and I just can't come up with it I'm just I got the blank screen blues I'm just staring at this blank screen and it's mocking me and I've got writer's block and it's so freaking frustrating that the best thing I can do is just say you know what screw it I'm done I roll up a joint I go for a walk and half a block down the street bam, the idea hits me and I have to pull out my phone and I have to start taking notes in Evernote before I forget the solution to my problem. Or sometimes it's not until the next morning and I'm not even thinking about it at all. I'm getting ready for the day. I'm about to jump in the shower and bam, the idea hits me when I'm butt naked, soaked in water, and I can't run to my computer. So I have to hold on to the idea until I get out of the shower. But it's the law of least expectance. It's once I'm least expecting the answer that the answer comes flooding to me. And in magic, they have sigil magic where you're supposed to focus your attention. You create a sigil, you draw it on a piece of paper, you focus your attention, you focus your intent, you meditate, you charge the sigil with your intent, you put all of your intent, what you want to manifest into the world, drive it home into that sigil. And then once you're done with the meditation, you take the sigil and you take the piece of paper that it's written on and you light it on fire and you let it go out into the universe. You release it out into the universe. And they say that to make it work, to make the magic actually work, You have to release it and then forget about it. And I've noticed that in my own life, it's at that point where I'm, when I'm forcing something, when I'm trying to force myself to remember a name or trying to force the solution to a problem that I'm having or trying to force the ideas to flow for a piece of copy that I'm writing. Oftentimes it's not until I release that energy until I say, you know what? I'm just not going to worry about it anymore. I'm going to let it come to me when it comes to me. And that's when it ends up coming to me. And when I'm doing my practices, <laughs> I don't know exactly how to say it, when I'm doing my meditations, when I'm doing my affirmations, or when I'm praying, because I still do pray, when I'm praying, that's the way that I do it. I say, 
you know, Lord, this is what I want, or universe, this is what I want, this is what I need help with, this is what I'm struggling with, please help me figure out the solution to this, please help me figure out the way to best make this happen, or please help me deal with this situation, and then I have faith in it, I stop dwelling upon it, as soon as I'm done praying about it, I let it go into the universe, if I'm praying for health for somebody, I I pray, please bless this person and, and bring them back to good health, and then I'm done with it, and I leave it up to God or I leave it up to the universe or I leave it up to the collective unconscious or the ether or whatever it is that's handling all of this stuff. I let go of it and I expect that it will come back when it's supposed to, when I'm least expecting it. And for me, one of the hardest things to do this with was money because I grew up dirt poor, grew up on welfare, grew up on food stamps, grew up constantly insecure about money, never knowing where our next rent check was coming from, having to leave and and bounce from campsite to campsite when we were homeless because we didn't know if we could come up with $26 to stay at the campsite for another night and constantly having this insecurity about when is new money going to come in? When is more money going to come in? Am I going to have enough money to deal with this? Am I going to have enough money to deal with that? Always, even when my business was doing good, 2018, 2019, my business was doing amazing, but I was still constantly obsessed about when's the next client coming in? When's the next paycheck coming in? Am I going to be able to make it till the next payday? Am I going to be able to make it until the next client? And I made a choice back in 2018, 2019, end of 2018, early 2019. I made a choice. I said, you know what? I'm not going to live like this anymore. I'm not going to constantly be worrying about where money's going to come. Whether money is here or not, I'm not going to worry about it. Money always seems to come. Money always seems to show up when I need it. So I'm going to stop dwelling on when is money going to show up and when is money not going to show up. And the weirdest thing was when I stopped worrying about it, it just started when I stopped saying, here's a chance for me to be generous. Here's a chance for me to give to a charity. Am I going to give 50 bucks to this charity? Do I have $50 that I can afford to give to this charity? Oh, well, if I give $50 to the charity, maybe I won't be able to get gas. Maybe I won't be able to. When I was thinking like that, I was always struggling. And when I said, you know what, I'm not going to worry about it. If there's an opportunity to give, if there's an opportunity to have a good time with the people I care about, that's more important than worrying about where the next dollar is going to come from. And when I started thinking that way, more more clients started coming, more money started coming. Every time that I started to run low on money, I'd make a bunch of sales just mysteriously. Or every time I'd start to worry about, oh, this client's where I'm at the end of this contract for this client, somebody else would hit me up and be like, hey, can we get you? Okay, I need to wait two weeks, but as soon as these two weeks are up, I can deal with you. And as soon as the one client was out the door, a new client was in the door. But it wasn't until I stopped worrying about money. It wasn't until I said, you know what? I'm going to have confidence. I'm going to have faith that my business is going to do it, that money is going to keep flowing to me. That money started actually flowing to me like that. And even in 2020, which was by far one of the worst years ever for my business, I lost clients left and right because the economy went to shit. Businesses were closing down. Had two of my cl- two of my clients had their businesses forced closed by the government, so there was no reason to keep running ads because their businesses were forced to close. And It was kind of a pain in the butt for me, but I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't struggle for money, even though I did struggle on certain things with personal autonomy and freedom and watching all of the crazy mandates and lockdowns. And that definitely hit me hard and and kind of put a negative spin on my worldview. But throughout the whole year of 2020, even though my business wasn't doing as well, I never struggled. I never was at a loss. I always still managed to make more than enough money. And I think it was because I wasn't really worried about money. I was worried about business. I was worried about my clients' businesses. But I still had a sense of no matter what happens, I can see opportunities all around me. I can still make money. And money just kept flooding into me, even though my business wasn't doing as well as it was the year before. And I've noticed this principle remains the same no matter what it is, whether it's money, whether it's relationships, whether it's friendships, whatever it is that you want in life, if you if you chase it, it runs away from you. It's like a dog. If you try to chase a dog, the dog's going to think you're playing a game and it's going to run away from you or it's going to see this big lumbering buffoon 
<laughs> chasing after it and it's going to start running away. It's going to be like, yo, what the heck's going on? I'm leaving. But if you have treats in your pocket and you just sit there and you're like, here, puppy, I got some treats for you. And you just assume that the dog is going to come to you because you know that you have something of value to the dog. The dog's going to come running up to you. If you chase it, it's going to run away. But if you have faith that it's going to come up to you because you know your value, it's going to come running up to you. It's kind of like what I see going on around me right now. So at the very beginning of 2019, I lost somebody, a potential prospect that I really dug his business. I thought it was an amazing business. I thought there was a lot of opportunity there. And we were just about to sign a contract to start working together. And then the Rona hit and my position, my take on it was vastly different than his. He totally bought into everything that was that the experts were saying. And he was uh, very much in line with the corporate narrative and I was not and we ended up going our separate ways and I've noticed that he among a lot of other people a lot of people told me at the beginning of the first six months of two weeks to slow the spread a lot of people told me I can't do business with you Nathan I can't be associated with your brand you're too radical you're saying stuff you're, you're not caring about the grandmas that you're endangering you with your dangerous disinformation. Uh, a lot of people, I lost a lot of business. I lost a lot of opportunities. And because the uh, tyrants on the other side have overplayed their hand, because they've been chasing the dog, because they've been squeezing with their iron fist, a lot of people have started slipping through their fingers. And one of those guys, the guy that I started out this story with that told me, I can't do business with you because you're a crazy anti-masker. He hit me up recently and was like, yo, all that shit that you said at the beginning of this, I'm sorry I didn't see it coming. You were right, and I owe you an apology. And we're actually talking again, and there's a possibility that we might work together. I'm not completely, I don't have complete faith in that, but he straight up told me, enough's enough. I played along, and it got to the point where I can't deny what you were saying at the beginning of all of this. And I feel like a fool that it took me two years to figure it out, but I figured it out. And that is what happens when you chase too hard, when you squeeze too hard, people slip through your fingers. When you try to force things too hard, it, you end up getting the opposite effect. I think of the Barbara Streisand effect where people took a picture of her house from like Google Maps or Google Earth, or maybe it was drawn footage and she didn't want her fans knowing how wealthy she was she didn't want people knowing how big of a house that she had because she was a i'm for the people type of liberal but she was living this lavish exuberant lifestyle and she didn't want it getting out how big of a house that she had so she tried to sue to stop people from showing the picture of her house on the internet which only caused more people to want to see the picture of her house on the internet. So she tried to force the censorship and it ended up going the opposite way. It ended up blowing up in her face. Right now we're watching the same thing happen with Joe Rogan. They're doing their best to try and censor Joe Rogan. And all it's doing is causing more attention to be directed towards Joe Rogan. They're trying to stop people from hearing what Joe Rogan and his guests are talking about. And all they're doing is pointing more people in that direction and pointing more people to listen to the message that he and his guests are talking about. So oftentimes when you try to force something, the opposite ends up happening. When you try to chase the dog, the dog runs away. When you try and squeeze too tight, people slip through your fingers. And it's the same way in business. It's the same way in a sales message. If you try to be too pushy, too salesy in your sales message, it's unattractive to people. People get repulsed by it. Desperation is unattractive. And when you're chasing the dog, it's an act of desperation. When you're silencing anybody who has a different opinion than you, it's a sign of desperation. It repels people. It's unattractive. And when you try to force something, you end up getting the opposite. A lot of times when you get on strategy calls with a client and you're desperate to bring on this new client, they can sense it and they don't like it. And they feel like, well, if this person's so desperate to get with me, there must be something wrong with them. And it ends up spoiling the sales call. That's why when I get on sales calls, when I get on discovery calls with people, I practice something called positive indifference. 
which is basically I can take this job or leave it. I have other clients lined up. You're one of three people that I have to interview to see who I want to work with. And going into a sales call like that with that type of mentality, with that type of attitude, rather than the I'm desperate for your money, I'm desperate for your approval, I need you to say yes because I don't know how I'm going to pay rent if I can't land you as a client, there's a huge difference in the results that you end up getting. When you chase the client, they run away. But when you know you have something of value for your clients, they run up to you. So when I'm creating my content, when I'm creating my sales pages, when I'm on client calls, my mentality is I know I'm the shit and I know that the right people will see my value. It's why I can joke about my face tattoos. It's why I can show up on a Zoom call with face tattoos and still land clients that are multimillionaires. It's because I put my intent out there, I put my value out there, and then I expect that the right people will come to me. And that's the mindset that you need, that the right people will buy from you, that the right opportunities will make themselves available to you. State it clearly, believe it, and then release it. Stop trying to force it. Have faith that it's already a sure thing, that your desire is already guaranteed, and then just have faith that reality will catch up with you. And that's what faith is. It's just simply belief in that which is yet to manifest. Going back all the way to the beginning of this week's episode, the idea of I'll remember as soon as they walk away, as soon as I'm not expecting to remember, it'll come to me. As soon as I'm no longer forcing it, it'll come to me. Whether it's because your subconscious mind is just able to work better when it's relaxed, or if it's because in that relaxed mode, it's easier for you to communicate with the universe or God or the ether or whatever. When you have faith in your vision, when you let go of the force, that's when things start to flow. And the people who have figured this out, that's why everything comes so easy for them. And the people who have to struggle and hustle and grind all the time to get the things that they want out of life, it's usually because they haven't figured this out yet. All right, I'm Nathan Frazier. That's this week's episode. Thank you for joining me. If you want more, you can find it over at advertisingcheatcodes.com. You can find out more about me over at advertisingalchemist.com. And if you want to join my private community, you can find that over at ForbiddenMarketingSecrets.com. Until next time, thanks again for joining me. I'll catch you later. Deuces. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you're subscribed so you always catch the content we create for you in the future.